Hey guys, the Reverend Worm here with another Pistons tutorial. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to make your hidden wall open and close from inside and out with just the touch of a button. Then I'm going to show you a couple of small piston devices that might be useful. And finally, I'm going to go inside my worm wall and give you a tour of that mess of wiring. So let's get started. Alright, having your hidden door here operated by button does two things really. One, it makes it so that you can open it and close it from both the outside and the inside. And also, buttons are just easier to hide than levers. I mean, if you have one of these on the wall, sometimes you can walk right past it, even if you're the one that placed it there. So, let me show you how it works. All you need is one of these, a T flip-flop. Now, there are many designs out there. I found this one on YouTube, actually, and um, it was the only one that I could actually get to work. So, I'm going to show you how to make that. Okay, the first thing you need to do is make an RS NOR latch. You make one of those like this, if you didn't already know. Two blocks, each with a torch. Connect each torch back to the block. Now this is a handy little device in its own right, and I use these a lot. But, to make this into a T-flip-flop, we're going to need to add something to it. First of all, this is going to be our input. And to make it work properly as a T flip flop, we need to put redstone here on top of this block, which normally you wouldn't do. But of course, to make this still work properly as a latch, you're going to have to put a block here to break the connection between the redstone you just placed and this redstone. That's a very important step. Next, you add redstone right here before this block and another piece here, coming from this torch. Now these two lines should be four spaces apart and you want to put blocks there. Now add torches here and here and connect them in the middle. Now what you want to do is bring this up like so and run your redstone wire up to here. You want to put a torch on the other side of that block and finally connect that torch here to the top of this block. And that's all you need. It's done. As I said, your input is right here. You can connect this to your button and your output is actually this one coming off of this first torch that you're looking at. If you use the one on the opposite side, it will flicker, and uh, you don't want that. Alright, now that we have our T-flip-flop, here's how to install it to the door. You have your button input here. Mine runs under the ground, under this wall, and comes out right here. Ignore this wire for now. This is the input connected here to the first block. And this is my output, which I have connected directly into my reversible signal generator. And all of that is connected into the pistons, as I showed you in my last video. Now, let me reconnect this, because what this is, is the other button on the inside. right here. And because 
I have this button hooked up as an input as well. See, it just plugs in to the same spot. Both buttons, upon being pressed, will activate the door to either open it or close it. And there you have it. It's just that simple. Now here's a fun and kind of noisy little piston device. A piston pulse generator. Let me turn it off. Okay. This is easy to build. All you have to do is place a sticky piston with a block attached. Dig a hole in front. Run wet redstone wiring around here to the piston and put a switch when sh once you turn it on the piston will fire break its own power source retract and start over now when they updated to 173 they did a few things that makes this not as efficient in 172 you could build these a little differently and they would work. You only had to put uh, redstone like that and move the piston closer. But that no, that no longer works for some reason. Uh, with the new update this this is the only way I've been able to get it to work and you have to have a repeater connected to your piston without it your signal won't pulse your piston will still fire as if it were but if you try to get a pulse out of this signal you, it does nothing it acts as a solid current Ah, and there is another little update flaw. Now, sometimes it will stop over its own power source, cutting it off. And for some reason the, p the sticky piston won't hold on to it. See? It just lets go. And you have to reset it manually. Annoying, but that's the way it is now. Okay, now that we've got this thing back set up, what can we do with it? We have our pulse going, as you can see. And uh, you can use any bit of this redstone as an output. You can even connect your redstone here. <laughs> Funny how it splits like that. And uh, what I've been using this pulse generator for whoops, after I fix it, huh, is for this, a cobblestone generator. All you have to do is connect your pulser to another piston, a standard piston, in the middle of a cobblestone generator, and it will push the cobblestone out. And this is how you build those self-building buildings. <laughs> oh no, sheep, you're in the way. As you can see over here, I have a, another one of these. Once this uh, cobblestone block reaches so far, it will shut off because pistons can only push so many blocks. So I turn this one on. And they begin to fire upward, but it's not working properly for some reason. There it goes. Now. Okay, there it goes. So, that's how you build 
a wall that will build itself. Now I recommend not having a lot of these pulse generators running at a time because it, it they will lag your game out a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if they lag more or less than traditional pulsers, but uh, yeah, they do add a little bit of lag. So if possible, link all of your moving pistons up to the same pulser. And be sure to turn them off when you're not using them. <laughs> Now this little device is something I came up with the other day when working on uh, Worms World, trying to get my sand reveal to work, if you saw the latest episode. Here we have two switches. They each do the same thing. Activate that piston over there. But there is something different about these two. Now this switch is set up the traditional way. Redstone wire underneath the block with the switch on it. The only problem with this is we can't hide all the wiring. It has to step down here. And if we place a block, it no longer works. That's where my design comes in. As you can see here, all the wiring is completely hidden. and it works fine. Now, this can be accomplished by one sticky piston. Okay, I've dug out the ground to show you the circuitry here. And this device uses a similar idea as the pulse generator I just showed you, where a piston comes down and breaks a redstone circuit coming from this torch and going to this piston. When you flip the switch, the piston either retracts, letting the current flow, or extends, breaking the circuit. The power comes from this torch and goes down one level underneath the piston and continues on. You have to use a block attached to the end of a sticky piston because pistons themselves won't break redstone current like this. Now I know this may be kind of a complicated way of doing it, but if you want to hide all your wiring, it is a feasible way to do that. The only thing is, your switch will now work opposite. When you turn it to what would normally be on, your signal is actually off, and vice versa. But that's a small price to pay to have completely hidden wiring. One more short thing concerning the reversible signal generator seen here. Someone asked me if you could build one of these that actually has, well, he mentioned four outputs, but uh, basically multiple outputs that still fire in proper order. And yes, it's actually very easy to do. As you can see here, they go off one, two, three, four, but come on, four, three, two, one. Perfect and it's easy as could be. All you have to do is copy this half of the signal generator onto the end for however many you want. You can continue it onwards but uh, one thing you have to note is that while it will go off immediately there will be some lag in turning back on because the signal has to get all the way to the end, basically. But that's how you do that. Alright, and finally, 
Someone else asked me if I could show off how to build the worm wall. And there's not really much to it. Uh, I'll take you inside and show you the circuitry, but I'm not really sure I could tell you how to build it specifically. Because it's basically just a mess in here. Um, all you have to do is make sure your redstone... Uh, there's a torch here under this block, by the way. <laughs> make sure your redstone circuitry goes to all of your pistons. And uh, you can do that in a number of different ways. I wasn't really concerned about getting them all timed right so that they all come out the same or, or any of that. I just made sure to make <laughs> make them all fire on the same switch. It uh, There's nothing <laughs> really, there's no real secret to it. You just just wire them all up. A redstone torch will power the piston directly in front of it and the one below it. So that's a handy trick I used. Um, yeah, <laughs> wow, mushrooms. <laughs> it, it's not uh, that hard to get it all put together. Of course, then again, it, it kind of is hard to get it all put together. It, I don't know. It's really just a mess of wiring. It There's no real trick to it or anything I could say to make it easy for you guys. You just <laughs> get back there and start slinging redstone around and eventually you'll <laughs> you'll get something that works. That's what I do most of the time, honestly. hope you enjoyed today's episode showing you a few fun piston devices and showing you the mess of circuitry that is behind this <laughs> but that's all from me guys later